Hello and welcome to the official how to play video for Meeple Inc. The year is 1976. The great Meeple human wars of the 1500s are a distant memory and the two species have coexisted harmoniously for centuries. Human ingenuity mixed with Meeple industriousness has led to a new golden age of board gaming. In this brave new world of tabletop gaming, you and up to five others take on the role of board game publishers, competing to create the greatest works of ludological art. Welcome to the world of Meeple Inc. In this video, I will run through everything you need, how to set up, play and score games of Meeple Inc. I'll be using the prototype deluxe components for this video, so yours may look slightly different. In Meeple Inc, you are aiming to be the most successful board game publisher in this alternate reality. To do this, you'll be assigning your workers to various jobs to make the greatest board games known to humanity. The player with the most victory points at the end of the game is the winner. First, let's take a look at setup. Place the game board in the centre of the table. Make sure to have the correct side for your player count face up, and this is indicated in the top left of the board. Next, give each player a board game table, four worker meeples of their colour and their deck of prediction cards. Then place the score marker for each player onto the zero space of the score track. Assemble a corporation nameplate easel for each player and place their corresponding nameplate card onto it. Shuffle the award cards and give one randomly to each player. In games of three or more players, give each player a corporation card deck. This deck contains a card with the corporation name of each of their opponents. Next, shuffle the skill, item, objective, freelancer and specialist card decks individually and place them face down into their corresponding spaces. Take the top four cards of the item deck and place them face up in the spaces to the right of the deck. Do the same with the top three cards of the Specialist deck, as well as the Freelancer deck. Then place all of the Specialist standees by the side of the game board near the Specialist deck. Then take the Inspiration, Time, Money, Playtest and Research tokens and place them to the side of the game board. And this will make up the general supply. Then take the game box bottoms and tops and place them near the game board. Take one box bottom of each level and place them into the corresponding spaces on the game board, leaving the remaining boxes to the side of the board as part of the general supply. Then take the component and mechanism tokens, arrange them by their number and place them to the side of the board in reach of all players. Place the award shelving unit by the game board in sight of all players. Then take the award tokens and place the level three awards face up onto the top three shelves, three level two awards onto the middle and three level one awards onto the bottom three shelves. For your first game, give each player their founder card and place this into the wow space of their player board and leave the power space empty. There is an optional step here for future games, so if you're looking for more complexity and variety in your games of Meeple Inc, then instead of a founder card, shuffle the POW and WOW decks and deal two cards to each player. Players choose one of each of these cards and place them onto their gaming tables. Then all unused POW and WOW cards are placed back into the box. Then give each player one objective card from the objective deck. Place this card face up for all to see. Then place the hourglass token onto the track around the game board on the space indicated for your player count. The last player to win a board game goes first. Then in clockwise order, the second player takes $1, the third player takes $2, the fourth player starts with one victory point, fifth player with one victory point and a dollar, and the sixth player starts with one victory point and $2. Finally, give each player a reference card, and you're ready to go! Let's now look at gameplay. Starting with the player who last won a board game and moving clockwise, players will take turns to place one of the workers from their pool of available workers onto an action space. Alternatively, they can use their turn to return all their workers back to their pool and make lucrative predictions about their opponent's plans. This turn-based game continues until the hourglass time token has reached the zero space of the track that runs around the edge of the game board, triggering the end of the game. 
So let's first look at placing a worker. For most of your turns, you will be placing your workers onto action spaces in order to perform actions. Action spaces are indicated by this shape. There are lots of actions in Games of Meeple Link, and these are shown in these boxes. You'll also notice a series of icons within the action spaces themselves. These are bonuses you receive for placing your worker in that specific space. For example, if you place a worker into this action space, you immediately gain a dollar as a bonus. Many actions have a safety cost to take them. Actions that have a safety cost will have this yellow hard hat above the action space. The cost to take this action is indicated by the items inside the hard hat, and this must be paid before the action is taken. For example, this space has a safety cost of one inspiration token, but will gain you a bonus of one research token when you place a meeple here. Now let's look at returning your workers. If you do not place a worker on your turn, then instead you must collect all your placed workers back to your supply in your player area. You can only take this action if you have at least one worker that has already been placed, and if you have no workers left to place on actions, then you must perform this action. You don't have to place all of your available workers on actions in order to take back your workers. But the most important rule here is, if you choose to do this, you must take all of your workers that have been placed on action spaces on the game board. For each worker you collect, move the hourglass token one space backwards on the track. If you cross a bonus space, immediately take the indicated bonus. When this hourglass reaches the zero space, the player who moved it there gets five victory points, and all other players take one final turn before endgame scoring occurs. When you collect your workers, you also have an opportunity to make predictions about your opponents. This is a key way to gain victory points in the game, but more on this later. It's now time to look at worker skills. Before moving on to the other aspects of gameplay, you need to know that every employee you hire specialises in at least one of three elements of board game creation, box, component and mechanism design. You are only permitted to create boxes, mechanisms and components that you have the required skill points for. So, to have a level 4 component, you must have 4 component skill points around your table. For example, this player can produce games with level 2 components, level 4 boxes and level 1 mechanisms. Let's now take a look at the different actions you can perform in games of Meeple Inc. The Gain Basic Resource Action Place a worker into this speech bubble to gain any one of the following resources an inspiration token, a dollar, a time token, or a victory point. There is no cost to take this action, and unlike all other actions, there is no limit to the number of workers that can take this action. Resources in Meeple Link are not intentionally limited, so in the unlikely event that you run out of one, just use a suitable replacement. The Hire a Specialist Action Place a worker in one of these spaces. You may hire any of the three face-up available specialists displayed on the board. However, only the far right specialist is free of charge. To hire specialists to the left of this one, you must place a resource. This can be a dollar, time, inspiration, research or playtest token. On each of the cards to skip over to take the one you wish. If the specialist you take has one or more resources on it, you also gain these when you take that specialist card. You cannot use your specialist workers until they have been assigned a place at your table. You do this by taking the play card action, which I'll explain next, but until then you must keep the card in your hand in your player area. When you place the specialist worker at your table using the play card action, you will also take the corresponding standee to act as your new worker. Specialists act as extra workers who can be placed onto all actions in the same way as your meeple workers. However, each specialist is also aligned to one of the actions on the game board and allows you special powers if you use your specialist on that particular action. There are two benefits for using your specialist on its related action. Firstly, you do not have to pay any safety costs to perform the action, but you still get the performance bonuses. 
Secondly, each specialist gives you a specific benefit when using its corresponding action. These are listed on the cards themselves and are explained in detail on page 17 of the rulebook. For example, this is the specialist worker whose specialist ability is hiring specialist workers. A benefit of using this worker on this action is that you do not pay any safety costs in the yellow hard hats attached to the action space. Another benefit you get for using this specialist here is that you can take any of the three available specialist workers without having to place a resource on the workers to the right of it. So now let's move on to the play card action. This action allows you to take employee cards in your hand, like the specialists we just saw, and give them a place at your table. Such cards cannot be used until they have a place at your table. Each time you take this action, place a worker into one of these spaces, pay any safety cost and take the bonus associated with the space you choose. Then you may take one of your employee cards from your hand and give them a space at your table. There are a total of six spaces around your table. If the table has a table bonus mentioned in that space, then you also take the indicated bonus when you place that employee there. If you do not have space on your table for an employee, then you cannot place one there. And remember, only one employee can be placed at your table each time you take this action. Last of all, if you placed a specialist card on your table, you immediately take the corresponding standee and can use it as an extra worker. Next up is the train worker action. Each time you place a worker in one of these spaces, pay any safety cost and take the bonus associated with the space you choose. Then you can take the top four cards of the skill deck and purchase any one of them by paying the dollar cost indicated in the bottom right hand corner of the card. Do remember though, if you cannot afford a particular card, then you can't take it. Once purchased, skill cards can be kept in your hand or used immediately. To use a skill card, simply slot it behind an employee who is already at your table. Each employee cannot have more than one skill card added to them, and you can't use a skill card unless you have an employee available to apply the card to. When you place the skill card behind the employee, you immediately gain the resource benefit listed on the centre of the card, and then your employee gains the extra skills listed at the top of the card. You do not need to use the play card action to add a skills card to an employee. It can be done at any time on your turn. Okay, now it's time for the hire freelancer action. Freelance employees are a crucial part of your production empire, giving you access to unique, powerful actions that only you can take. Each time you place a worker in one of these spaces, Pay any safety cost and take the bonus associated with the space you choose. Then take any one of the three face-up freelancers in this row. Like specialists, only the far right freelancer is free of charge. To hire freelancers to the left of this one, you must place a resource on each of the cards to skip over to take the one you wish. If the freelancer you choose has resources on it, you also gain these when you take that freelancer card. Take the card you chose and then put it into your hand in your player area. As before, you cannot use the freelancer until they have been given a space at your table using the play card action. The abilities of each freelancer are explained on the cards themselves in icons, and there is a detailed explanation of each one on page 14 of the rulebook. This freelancer, for example, allows you to place a worker onto this card in order to gain up to three playtest or research tokens, or a mix of the two. This freelancer also has a mechanism skill, which will be added to your total, allowing you to gain higher level mechanisms. Do note that all of these only apply once this freelancer has been given a space at your table using the play card action. The playtest action. Each time you place a worker in one of these spaces, you gain two playtest tokens. The research action. Each time you place a worker in one of these spaces, then you gain two research tokens. Gain basic resource action. Each time you place a worker in one of these spaces, you gain up to three of any of the resources listed. Dollars, time or inspiration. You do not have to take three of the same type of resource. Now onto the gain item action. Each time you place a worker in one of these spaces, you can then take any one of the four face-up item cards in the row. 
Like the specialist and freelancer tracks, only the far right item card is free of charge. To gain items to the left of this one, you must place a resource on each of the cards to skip over to take the one you wish. If the item you choose has resources on it already, you also gain these when you take the item card. Item cards have benefits on them that you can take at any point on your turn. You don't need to add these cards to your gaming table. Simply discard the card to the bottom of the item card deck at any time during your turn and then take the bonus indicated. Now, the game game box action. Each time you place a worker in one of these spaces, then you can purchase any one of the board game box bottoms currently available, paying the indicated inspiration cost to gain these. There are four levels of game boxes. So level four boxes cost four inspiration, level three costs three inspiration and so on. So just pay the cost, take the box bottom and put it into the center of your board game table. When you've purchased a game box, replace the empty space on the game board with another box of the same value from the general supply, unless there are no boxes left. And in this case, it's left empty. You can only ever have one game box on your gaming table. So if you do not have space for one, then you can't purchase one. And you cannot buy a game box unless your workers have the required skill levels for that box. For example, you need four of these icons on your workers to take a level four box. Next up is the gain component or mechanism action. Each time you place a worker in one of these spaces, you can purchase a mechanism or component. Gaining a mechanism costs playtests, and purchasing components costs research. Pay the indicated cost for the level of mechanism or component you wish to purchase, and add it to your gaming table. If you already have a game box in this space, then the mechanism or component goes into it. Like game boxes, you must have at least the same number of worker skill icons on your employees for the component or mechanism level you wish to purchase. And remember, you can only ever have one mechanism and component on your gaming table. So if you do not have space for one, then you can't purchase one. Let's now look at the upgrade action. Each time you place a worker in one of these three spaces, pay a time token and you can then upgrade a box, mechanism or component based on the space you chose to place your worker. You must already possess a box, mechanism or component in order to use this action. And you cannot upgrade a box, mechanism or component higher than level four. A major bonus of this action is that you are allowed to upgrade the box, mechanism or component to a higher level than you currently have skill icons for. For example, if you have a level two box and you only have two box skill icons on your employees, then you can use the furthest left action space in this action to upgrade the box to a level three. Now it's time for the publish game action. Each time you place a worker in one of these spaces, you can publish one of your games. To do this, take the game box on your gaming table. Ensure a component and mechanism are in the box and then choose a box lid for the newly published game. The published game is taken off your gaming table, bring it up for a new box, mechanism and component, and your published game is placed in your player area. In order to publish a game, you must have a box, mechanism and component token on your gaming table. If you don't have all three of these, then you cannot publish your game. Published games are worth victory points equal to the combined level value of their game box, mechanism and component. But you only gain these points at the end of the game. Now for the gain award action. Each time you place a worker in one of these spaces, you can take one of the nine awards that are on the box shelves. To do this, take one of your published games which has at least the required level of box, mechanism and component listed on the award you wish to gain. Each player has different requirements to gain awards and these are indicated by the award card you received at the start of the game. Place your published game onto the board game shelf in the place where the award token is and take the award token into your player area. You no longer gain the victory points for this published game, but instead gain the post-game victory points based on the award level you have gained. Each level of award requires a unique combination of box, mechanism and component, which are indicated on your award card along with the victory points awarded for gaining this award level. 
For example, if you have this award card, then to win a level 1 award, you need to publish a game with at least a level 2 box, level 2 mechanism and a level 1 component. You'll gain 9 victory points for each of these awards at the end of the game. Similarly, if you want a level 3 award and you had this card, then you need to publish a game with at least a level 3 box, a level 3 mechanism and a level 4 component and you would gain 17 victory points for each of these awards at the end of the game. Okay, now the trade action. Place a worker into one of these spaces and pay any applicable safety cost. You may then trade any of your resources for any of the same level. You could make as many trades as you like during the turn you took this action. Trades are made with the general supply, and there are two levels of resources. Level 1 resources are inspiration, dollars and time tokens, and level 2 resources are playtests and research. For example, if you use this action you could trade three time tokens for three coins, and one research for a playtest, but not a time token for a playtest. Now for the last action, the gain objective action. Each time you place a worker in one of these spaces, you take the objective action, which means you draw the top four objective cards from the objective deck. You look through them and choose one of those four cards to keep, placing it face up in your player area for all to see. The remaining three cards that you didn't choose are placed at the bottom of the objective deck. Do note though, you don't have to take any of them. Each objective card has a requirement at the top. In this example, the requirement is to have three coins and three inspiration tokens at the end of the game. If you achieve the required objective listed on the card by the end of the game, then you gain the victory points listed at the bottom right of the card. And if you don't achieve the objective by the end of the game, then you will lose the amount of victory points listed in the bottom left of the card. The items required to achieve an objective card can only be used for one objective card, and so if multiple objectives require the same resource, you'll need multiple instances of that resource. So that's all the actions in the game, but there are a few more rules we need to learn before we can start playing. So let's now look at making predictions. When you collect your workers on your turn, rather than taking an action by placing a worker, you also have the opportunity to use up to four of your research tokens to make predictions on the future actions of your fellow players. To do this, choose one opponent's corporation card to make a prediction about them. Play their corporation card face up in front of you for all to see. You can pay research tokens to make up to four predictions over actions you think this opponent will make before you again take the collect your workers action. Each prediction card represents an action on the game board. For example, this card predicts that the player will take the higher specialist action. Choose a card for each research token you paid. And this is what you are predicting your opponent will do. Place the prediction card face down near your opponent's corporation card. These predictions are only known to you. If the opponent you made a prediction about performs one of the actions you predicted on their turn, flip the relevant prediction card face up. If all your predictions are proven to be true, then you immediately collect the victory point reward for this, indicated on the back of each prediction card. In this case, return all the prediction cards you used to make the predictions back to your prediction deck and gain the victory points. In a nutshell, you get two victory points for each correct prediction. If by the time you next collect your workers, all of your predictions for an opponent have not proven correct, then you do not gain anything for these predictions. So return all the prediction cards to your deck and you can then make new predictions if you have the required research tokens. Now, this crystal ball icon is called the prediction bonus. It allows you to make one of your predictions true even if that player has not performed the action. It is a great way to ensure you gain prediction points, even if you missed one or more of your predictions. For example, if I made these three predictions and two have come true, I can use this bonus to act as if the third is true, and thus gain six victory points. Because remember, all your predictions need to come true before you next collect your workers, in order to gain the indicated victory points. So now let's look at the action bonus. This powerful bonus indicates that you can immediately take any action from the game board without placing a worker. You do not get any bonuses for taking this action, nor do you pay any safety costs. And importantly, these actions do not count towards any predictions made by opposing players. If taken the upgrade action, then you may upgrade any one element, 
box, mechanism or component each time you use this power. And if taken the action bonus to gain a game box component or mechanism, then you still need to pay the required inspiration, research or playtests respectively. Now on to victory points. There are two types of victory points in Meeple Inc. In-game and post-game victory points. They look similar, but one has these three stars above it. In-game victory points have no stars. These are gained immediately. Post-game victory points, however, are those with stars. These are only gained at the end of the game during the final scoring. Speaking of scoring, that's up next. The game ends when the hourglass token reaches the zero space on the scoring track around the game board. The player who moves the hourglass token into the zero space of the game board triggers the end of the game and immediately gains five victory points. When this happens, each of the other players take one final turn before scoring commences. Note that if a player returns their workers during this time, the hourglass does not move. The final scoring of the game will take into account the victory points that have been gained on the track during the game, and those gained in any of the following three ways, making sure to score each separately. Published games. Published games are worth victory points at the end of the game equal to the combined level value of their box, mechanism and component. For example, a published game with a game box level of 3, a mechanism level of 2 and a component level of 1 is worth 6 victory points. Published games that have been submitted for an award don't gain any points. Objective cards. If you've achieved the required objective listed on an objective card by the end of the game, then you gain the victory points listed at the bottom right of that card. Make sure to deduct the indicated victory points on the bottom left of the card for any objectives that have not been achieved. And remember that the items required to achieve an objective can only be used for one objective card. So if multiple objectives require the same resources, you will need multiple instances of that resource. For example, if a player has this objective card at the end of the game, then they gain four victory points if they have four research tokens. If they don't have these, then they lose two victory points. Awards. Each player then adds the points they gained from their awards. Awards are worth the amount indicated on a player's award card. For example, a player with this award card gains nine victory points for each level one award token they possess. After this has been completed, the player with the most victory points wins the game. Woo! In the event of a tie, then of the tied players, whoever was furthest away from going first at the start of the game is the winner. And that's everything you need to know to play Meeple Inc. Please feel free to ask any questions you have in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to answer them. Enjoy!